Papaloids Podcast. Kyle here with Pierre and two very special guests. Hi, I'm Kenny Porter. I'm the writer of DC Mech at DC Comics. I've also written Superboy, which is coming out soon, Flash, The Fastest Man Alive, and various other projects for DC, as well as Fearless at Scholastic and some other fun creator-owned stuff. I'm Baldemar Rivas. I'm the artist for DC Mechs, and I draw for a living. I like it. All right, guys, we appreciate you joining us. We're going to talk all about mechs. We're going to get some spoilers for mechs, and we're going to share it all over the internet. But first, before we do all of that, I'd like to ask... The story of how you two met. You want to tell right. them our meet cute, Kenny? Sure. It was raining. It was Seattle. I was drenched on the corner in a trench coat under a streetlight. No, I um, my diary. I wish. No, so we met originally. I worked on a script for an issue of Batman Urban Legends where they were doing some of the future versions of Batman and they wanted to revamp Batman 1 million. So I jumped in. We did a cool, fun new take and our editor, Dave, recommended... Baltimore said that he had a style that would fit it with what I was going for because I wanted a lot of like common writer and manga type influence stuff in it. And so I got to see some of Baltimore's work. I thought it was awesome. I was like, yes, let's ask him. And thankfully he said yes to my absolutely bonkers little future Batman script of Batman 1 million. We started working there and then eventually when it came time to do this, the response to Batman 1 million was really positive. So like, hey, you guys have worked together great. Do you want to work together again on this? And I was like, absolutely, freaking lutely I want to do that. So if Baltimore has an alternate take on that where he thinks I'm an absolute jerk, I'm welcome <laughs> to hear that. What? <laughs> they paired me up with this guy. He asked me to draw this crazy stuff all the time. They're always oh, making no, up man. new stuff. No, man, I love creating stuff because how I got started is because, yeah, the Batman 1 million, and then it was like a 90s property, and I was kind of like, yo, can I revamp the costume? And uh, they let me get away with that, and then I'm like, cool, I'm down for whatever, I could just, like, create more stuff. Uh, yeah, Kenny just created his whole universe, and uh, I got to draw it, which was intense. But I loved every second of it. I still do. I'm drawing it currently. And yeah, man, I can't wait till I can relax and probably sleep for a week. But thank you. <laughs> thank you, Kenny. You're pushing my artistic abilities. And I appreciate that. As long as it's appreciated and not yeah. hated. I've made jokes with Baldemar before about how like every time I write a page that I want to write at the top of it, Baldemar, I'm sorry. Because I yeah. have to. <laughs> I go pretty ham on the story stuff for like adding new things in or creating new stuff. But yeah, that's how that. we ended up being paired up. I would respect you less if you did not. So I'm glad you did. I played it safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like just draw a Superman. Yeah, draw an army battalion. Yeah. Like, Hell yeah, dude. Let's do it. <laughs> just don't draw a whole army or battle. Just draw one soldier to be like, there's other guys behind me, I swear. Mm -hmm. But he's cocking the rifle. <laughs> that kind of answered my first question, which was experience working together, which obviously you've had experience working together on some projects. Yeah. And it was a two-parter question. Did DC approach both of you for this project or how did it all play out? Which we now know the story of how you met. Yeah, so for DC Mech, it started with a really simple conversation with our editor Dave he called me it was like hey I have something I think you'd be great for would you be down and I was like totally he's like here's what we have it's called DC mech and Superman is sent to earth in a mech suit instead of a rocket the rest of it what do you want to do and I was like I can do whatever he's like yeah and I was like okay and he's like take a month or so just like write up some ideas we'll talk about it just get some bullet points like a page by the end of that week I had eight pages of story stuff from beginning of the universe to where it was there complete machinations of a madman and i called him i was like i want to do this this and this i want to completely rebuild the universe from the ground up and everything be changed this is how i would do it like is this okay luckily they were crazy on board and let me do that and approved it so dc mech is an alternate universe dc comic story where the entire timeline shifted after an invasion in World War II by Apocalypse, and superheroics were no longer going to cut it due to these new, like, bioorganic weapons Darkseid was sending. So the entire universe pivots towards mecha-based combat. And in this story, the DC characters we love, Batman, Superman, and stuff, are trying to stop the new invasion from coming. And Superman's story is that he arrives sent here to try to stop the next part of Darkseid's campaign to take over the universe. but because this is an Earth where aliens invaded in the 40s, they are not so keen on having a hero from space come to help them in their battle. So a lot of tensions ensue and stuff, and that's where the story kind of picks up. So we get to build out a whole new Elseworlds 
together, which is incredible, which has been so much fun because like, I love these characters. I love mecha stuff. I'm surrounded. You can see a lot of my comic stuff right there, but I've got like Gundam models all over here and stuff everywhere. I've had them, built them for years. So I jumped at the chance to be able to meld two of my favorite things together and do a new take on the DC universe through like the lens and prism of real robot and super robot stuff. So that's kind of how it all came together. And then we brought Baldemar in, like I said, after he was recommended for us to team up again. And I'll let you speak a little bit more to it, Baldemar, but in terms of coming up with everything, like nothing was done in a trivial manner everything was super thought out in terms of design or the influences we took yeah man what's good with working with kenny is kenny was really receptive to creating this world and definitely let me put in my two cents as well so it wasn't just a, a one-sided conversation which is something i really like because that's why i got into comics man i got into comics to talk to people to really build something up and create something new so yeah we are getting this you know the dc universe but we're making it our own and we also want to highlight the mech genre in itself and you know pay a good homage to it so while creating these characters we would talk a bit about it for each mech and he would give me also a type summary of what he's thinking how their powers operates with the mech and then he tells me a certain type of mechs that influence that I should be thinking about while designing these mechs. So what I liked about it, he said, you know, it's more of a feel for sure. And then I could just workshop in my mind and create something new. And then I'll show it to Kenny and the editor and they'll be like, it looks cool, man. Because when I do these thumbnails of these designs of the mechs, I would start off with maybe four or maybe eight if I just get really lost in it. And then Kenny and my editor, they would rein me in and be like, okay, we like the legs on number three. We like the head on number two. Can we just do like a combination and that's how the batman mech and a lot of the other mechs were created as well that's pretty cool it's like you actually built them yeah yes <laughs> it was like all these concept things like in a factory Baltimore would do like eight versions of the mech mm -hmm. this one this one this one we're like all right let's take the head from one the leg you said the legs from three this from four and like let's all meld those together same with the pilot suits too which Baltimore did all the designs for mm -hmm. so he had to do design for every character which is a lot yeah yeah it was really cool because uh, i would just draw like all these batman designs and i would be like super sci-fi batman super like top gun heavy batman just like air pilot suits kind of armageddon looking design slowly pick and choose it was really fun to do do you and think I'm... we're ever going to see those designs again it'd be a waste not to show these like can i just tease them of like what could have been or like you know the thought process because i think people will like that it ends up in the trade like all in the back yeah and the thing is like what we've been showing in dc mac is the max evolve over time that's my favorite part about machinery is like you can always tune it you can always change so just to let you know the mechs that you see now they're not gonna look the same by the time we're done with it by issue six so stay tuned that's really cool that's awesome i think something that stood out of what you were saying i guess playing with like mechs and building figures back like when you're a kid i know mm -hmm. i did this as a kid but i used to take like the head of like a random gundam and put it on a different body and like you know because you could like take those pieces off and kind of like put it together and make your own yeah it's like kit bashing but with the dc universe of us getting to yeah. <laughs> take pieces of all of baltimore's stuff yeah. which is great it's awesome so we did get to read it early and before we keep going i do want to say it is fantastic like it is the coolest oh, thing thanks man thank you man I can't wait for the next one. I'm a little mad we read it early, just for the fact now we have to wait longer. <laughs> but you mentioned before with Superman, that's basically the one seed they gave you that he came to Earth in a mech. So with that, my question is, did you choose to age him up? It was intended for him to show up as a young adult, which I don't know if that's happened before. If he's arrived on Earth, like in his early 20s, like battle seasoned. But I thought it was important for this story, like to have everyone's views kind of solidified, especially when he first meets Batman, the Flash and everything in the story that they have very different viewpoints of what it means on protecting a planet or what it means to welcome someone from another planet. So yeah, aging him up was definitely planned from the beginning. I thought that was a cool choice. Just that alone changes the whole atmosphere besides the fact that, you know, Dr. Fate's head goes flying like in one of the first kind of panels. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the JSA, it does open with the JSA and not great things happen to the JSA. <laughs> we can say that. <laughs> Dad, I love the intro. 
I thought it was amazing just seeing them like, oh, wait, okay. I didn't know where we were headed. And then, uh -huh. you know, a couple panels in, you're like, oh my God, they're going to be destroyed right now. Like, <laughs> And then starting it there and kind of giving us that early kind of setting. Which is interesting because another reason I wanted to open it in the Golden Age, like besides the fact that I love the Golden Age characters. Listen, even though some horrible things happened to the JSA, I love the JSA. All right. <laughs> it's just part of the story. But I want to set it in the Golden Age because I think it's a good mental thing to get people thinking about how the powers work and stuff. Because instead of superheroes, the planet has what they call enhanced pilots. So somebody like Superman in this universe, if you think about it at like Golden Age power levels, like... Golden Age Superman does not have the powers that, like, Silver Age, Modern Age Superman has. He's not that powerful. He's still stronger than the normal person. We talk about in the book a lot about how his Kryptonian biology is designed to power the suit. So he's essentially the engine for it, which we get into a lot later. So all of the, like, taking in of yellow sunlight is used to power the mech, which we get into, like, operation limits and stuff. So there's some really cool story things we get to do that, like, the mech genre does that superheroes don't usually. Like, one thing I know, Baltimore love is battle damage people can go into a fight and somebody can get taken out because they lose limbs or like the cockpit gets cracked they lose their monitors they've used too much power same thing goes with the flash where we talk about in issue one that like he's designed to be faster than the normal human but it's mainly designed so that he can withstand the g-forces of the mech and move at hyper speeds and everything as a sort of attack which he can only do at like short bursts that it can handle it so there's a lot of that sort of fun stuff that we put into the designs of, like building up the world and creating new limitations so that when they go into a fight, it's way more of a tactical mech battle than just like who's got more superpowers sort of thing. Yeah, I noticed with the blueprint designs, Baltimore, are you the one that designed the blueprints? No, no. Uh, that was Dan Mora, man. Okay, Those okay. are really fucking cool. <laughs> Because yeah. <laughs> I remember talking to Dave and Kenny about what do we want for our covers to be? And we were all just like shooting ideas. And I was like, man, it'd be really cool to have blueprint artwork of the mechs. And then our editor was like, I'm already a step ahead on that. And Dan Moro already had some like sketches that he showed us. And it was so damn cool. But yeah, that's all Dan Mora, dude. That guy's a gem. So the powers that are listed on the blueprints, I noticed uh, the Wonder Woman one came out recently. And something that I liked was that her lasso has been turned into still her lasso of truth, the idea of that, but more so, I guess, a, a weapon that a mechs use to, was it, disable the other mech? Mm -hmm. It can disable and it can steal information. So it can mm -hmm. download the OS. So similar to like a lasso of truth, like it still does that, that she can hook somebody and like completely hack and take all the info in the mech. So that's it's not a spoiler because I just described it, but that does happen in the series that she uses it to wrap around and steal information from enemies and everything. That's really clever. Yeah, I like how we kind of transform just like you were saying the flash's power is an enhanced pilot. And you know, they're all using kind of their abilities that we're used to, but more so on a mech level but i know kenny you're big into anime big gundam yep. fan a few different animes that we've talked about before in the past baltimore we've never talked to you about anime but do you have certain animes that you're into like right now or just in general in general i don't know if you draw a lot of inspiration from anime i'm sure you uh, like gundam. Yeah, dude. Yeah, um, yeah. of course dragon ball dude dragon ball is always a go-to and then yeah I'm, i've been watching the uh, anime a lot of 90s anime I grew up in the Central Valley in California, so there's a lot of like flea markets are huge. So my dad would give me a dollar and I can buy two VHSs. So I would buy a crap ton of like 90s like anime movies and stuff. So I'd watch Akira at like 10 years old. I had no idea what it was, but I was like, this is really cool. The guy that kind of like blows up at the end. Spoiler yeah. warning. <laughs> yes, sorry. I'm sure everyone's watched it. I hope at this point. And that's also my introduction of like Gundam was buying a VHS of Gundam, I think the zero and it was pretty cool man it's always been like a big thing it just like gundams are really rad and like i love like metabox as well that's something i'd like a lot of you can change parts a lot i don't know if you guys ever seen metabox yeah it's like a knockoff yeah, pokemon really. yeah but right now i'm excited for chainsaw man yeah That'll be really dope. I love the studio that did that. I think it's Mappa is their name. And they yeah. did Jujutsu Kaisen, which is one of my favorites. So yeah, the animation is going to be sick. That thing gets gory. So it's going to be interesting to see. There's yeah. no trailer, right? There's a trailer. For out. Chainsaw Man? There is, yeah. Did it come out? Oh, okay. Yeah. I watch it every morning. Get me out of bed. <laughs> Get me uh, pumps <laughs> or all so. Will there be toys? The kids want to know. We've got a lot of our questions. I should hope so. Kids. Definitely very toyetic. Yeah. Because I've been buying a lot of like model 
model kits too. And just, they're really cool. They're a lot of fun. I remember I was building a model kit and I couldn't find the box. And I described it to Kenny and Kenny told me the exact number of the Gundam, which was insane. It's going to be good later. <laughs> Yeah, so you're gonna we'll need that knowledge. Good I am. That's why we'll he's gonna be my again. team. Because <laughs> yeah, he's like, it's like this color, and it's from oh. this series. And I was like, oh, that's the Buster Gundam, the GATX one zero three. And he was like, are you looking that up? I was like, no, I know that because I'm a crazy person. So we'll see how well I do in your little planned thing later. So we want toys. If we got builds, which one would you pick? Which one would be your build? Which one would you want? Out oh, of for your... me to build like as a model kit? Yeah. I feel like the, ooh, there's some of them that people haven't seen yet. You almost got me there. Uh, <laughs> out of the ones we've seen, I think I would want the Superman one because I love the shape of the arms so much. So I think that would be really fun and look really cool on a shelf, uh, especially with the proportions of like the way bigger arms. But the Batman one would be tempting for the cloak. It would be pretty badass. I really like my Batman's head shape. So it just sucks because it just sounds like I'm just, I don't know, super into my stuff. But I like, <laughs> and there are all my designs and I have to pick one. But the Batman one is my favorite right now. I like the head a lot and I think it'd be to look really cool on a shelf. And I don't know if I would ever get one. I don't know if I would get work because I'd just be staring at it because I love staring at my figures and shit. They're really cool. <laughs> I think this would be the first and only Wonder Woman design that I would actually buy. Oh, yeah? It's pretty dope. A hundred percent. I would never put a Wonder Woman anything on my shelf. I promise uh -huh. you that this would be the first Wonder Woman design and one and only. There'd only be one Wonder Woman. This would be it. And now you're canceled. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> we put a lot of thought into the Wonder Woman one in terms of like influence and stuff because a big part of it was that we wanted to make sure that everybody's mech had different influence because like similar to the DC universe those characters were originally all separate kind of publishers and creators and stuff and all had different backgrounds so we thought we should do the same with the mechs so while like the Batman mech is more inspired by like the crossbone Gundam and everything the Superman mech is more inspired by like Mazinga, Big O like bit of the Iron Giant and everything obviously you can't get away from that with a big robot being Superman and then the Wonder Woman one, we actually kind of pivoted a little bit and picked a lot of the like Ray Harryhausen Clash of the Titans type stuff to make it look like it was something like stone and metal that had been made by like Hephaestus at that size of having like gold piping and everything. And the one really cool thing I love about the blueprint cover for the Wonder Woman one is that we made it kind of look like it had been painted on the side of a vase or like on a tapestry or something. We had Dan do that to make it look like it was old, like parchment or something painted, like a diagram or something like Hephaestus down there. Like they got me building a giant machine for her to sit in. What's going on here? So <laughs> I thought that was really cool. And I loved Valdemar's take on it. Thanks, man. Yeah, dude, Dan Mora just runs with anything, man. He just completely understands what we're trying to go for and he just understands. Yeah. Well, Ricardo Lopez also did really cool like he's been doing also the variant covers as well as one of my favorites with he has like a studio trigger vibe on the first issue that i adore and uh, seeing other artists like interpret your artwork it's insane man i never thought yeah. i'd see that <laughs> yeah yeah he has that batman superman face off one that i think that's mm -hmm. the one you're talking about right yeah, yeah. also carl herschel uh, yeah carl herschel did that superman one mm -hmm. yeah we've been getting some really good variant cover artists and yeah dc believes in us so i'm just excited man they're letting us run with it and giving us the team and stuff so it sounds like these guys believe in us we've gotten at least two yeah. people remind me who's the colorist on the book mike spicer he really he, pops. yeah man yeah i'll let mike run with it because i usually color my own stuff like in the beginning but being with dc like i want to test out the colorists so i just told mike like hey man here's the pages do whatever you want you know just run with it so yeah mike's killing it it's great yeah I love Mike's stuff. All his stuff he does on Daniel Warren Johnson's work, like Murder Falcon and Extremity and stuff, it looks incredible. And I'm really glad that we got paired up with him because he makes Baltimore's stuff look great. I mean, again, it's only issue one, but overly impressed with all of it. The whole concept, everything just looks cool. It's going to be such a hit. It's like, I really thanks, believe man. it. Gonna <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. We held nothing back. It was mm -hmm. like, we're going to do this. Like, we're going to do this big, which is why I always like say I should write, I'm sorry, at the top of the page, <laughs> Baltimore. <Right. laughs> so it's just like, all right, here's a whole nother corner of the DC universe. Because one thing to tease out is that if you think we're just doing the big guys, 
there's deep DC polls of like things that are going to show up. Like it's the universe of things showing up like in battles, even if it's just for a couple panels, which is why I usually apologize. Cause I'm like, I'm sorry, but it would make sense that X, Y, and Z would be here. So let's go for it. And luckily Baltimore is always like, hell yeah. Like let's do it. Yeah. You know, way more than I do about the DC universe. So when you say like a certain word, I'm like, yeah, that sounds cool. And then you send me like all the links to what you're talking about. I had no idea of these sides of the universe or these like deep dives of the DC things that you do. So that was really interesting and lucky for me to be with such a talented writer. You're gonna be after this, you'll be able to say like, oh yeah, I've worked on like every character. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I worked with a madman. Yeah. So, do you think you guys have more mech stories and you pass this? Like, do you already? Yeah, I figured you're already brainstorming like yeah. sequels. Yeah. Yeah. When I built out the story bible, I already had sequels and stuff in mind of where it was going to go and stuff. So, if it does well and the people want it, like, we're willing to do more, man. Like, we've got plenty more stories to tell with way more characters to introduce. So, again, sorry. There's definitely more to come. So, I just want to throw a little crossover idea between Jurassic. DC and Mech DC. Jurassic Making League? Worlds. Yeah. Listen, Daniel and I are very close friends and mm. we compared notes over barbecue in Chicago to one, make sure we weren't going to step on each other's toes with the alternate universe things you were doing. And two, because we're gluttons for delicious food. But listen, if that's something people really want, the potential is there because we already talk like every day. So it would be very easy for us to write a Jurassic League DC yes, mech man. brawl. Yeah. That's my only plug on that. I just thought of it and I was like, it's kind of like Godzilla, mech Godzilla mech type Godzilla, thing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, so if that um, happens, well, Pierre's head is going to swell so severely, yeah. you'll never be able to talk to us again. No. I'll have to just get rid of him. And <laughs> it'll be the end for you, Pierre. I'm sorry, you won't be able to handle it. <laughs> My next question is What character outside of DC do you think deserves a man? You Ooh. can feel free to use your own title. All right. That's a good question. Hmm. Well, you can't give it to Spider Man because Spider Man already had one in the Japanese version. He had Leopardon, which is why we have Megazords, by the way. Like, Power Rangers wouldn't have that if Spider-Man didn't have it. Mm. Let's see. Who else would be fun to give a mech to? For the pure carnage of it, and because we mentioned it earlier, I would say Chainsaw Man. Yeah. For him to have a giant chainsaw form that was all mechanical, I think would be super fun. That would be more like, you know, not an overarching story thing, but one long, like, one shot of manga of Chainsaw Man or one long special episode, I think would be really fun to have him tearing around in a giant mechanical chainsaw chopping some sort of, you know, eldritch demon thing coming out of the ground would be really fun. I've been thinking about it, and easy, man. I get Dominic Toretto. Whoa. <laughs> That's the next stage, man. They already won the space. What's the next stage? Yeah. If they can drift on a mech. Ooh. That would be cool. Now, is his mech like a transformer? Like, what if you were to design? That. Yeah, design his mech for us. I guess I'm just thinking about like Megas XLR. Have you seen that? That's what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that his car would just be on top of a robot body and he would control yeah. it by shifting and turning <laughs> the wheel. Yeah, okay. that's kind of what I'm thinking about. <laughs> Uh, uh, I can already picture a couple panels of him just yelling, this is for family, yeah. right through the window. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably do like a family fusion, like a Voltron or something. That'd be cool. Oh, that. <laughs> all the cars, like one attaches on the arms, on the forearms and stuff, and on the legs, and they all rev and shift together. Because in those movies, like shifting is a superpower, apparently. Like when they shift, they become better drivers. All of a sudden. Would there be a separate, separate mech for Tokyo Drift? That's my favorite Fast and the Furious movie. And I yeah. wish... It'd be yeah, they did more stuff with that. You'd call it the Drifter, and it'd be a smaller version with slicked up legs that could go faster, pivot quicker. I'm just picturing, like, a badass paint job. Yeah. With, like, yeah. things or something. Who would you pick as a pilot? Would it be Lil Bow Wow? Or... Oh, man. No. The, <laughs> the Midwest guy. All right. Yeah. I just imagine Lil Bow Wow's car in that movie, like being the head of that. He could be a mechanic for his mech or something. It is all about family, so maybe they should all sit in the car together. Maybe it should be a station wagon on the top of both of them so that everybody can sit. And then they make somebody sit in the way back facing the other way out of the back window. Yeah. <laughs> a little gun in the back. 
Yeah. <laughs> this is great. I think you guys should really start working on this. Honestly, it's a great idea. We could pitch an image or something. Call us. Yeah. yeah. So any hints on any characters or all of them real quick? Just list all the characters, one through <laughs> six, real quick. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so Baldemar's wraparound cover for issue one already kind of like gives away the main team. So we know, as we mentioned, Wonder Woman, the Green Lanterns are coming pretty soon. Hal and John are on that wraparound cover. Some other characters mm -hmm. to see some cosmic ones you might not expect to see. Both for people who haven't read issue one, there's a couple of interesting ones there. And then coming issue two, three, four, five, six, there's some more cosmic type ones you might not expect based on like villains or heroes. So like I said, no corner of the universe was left unturned. In fact, we had to cut some because I put too many in. So some people are going to get benched until the second one. Hopefully oh. we get to do a second one. So if you can think of somebody who you think it would be fun to be in there, they're probably in there. If not, they're in the machinations of if we get to do a second one. So I don't know if that's an opportunity for me to like guess and try and read your body language. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to not do that. Okay. I appreciate oh. it. I don't know. Oh, I've had a lot of coffee today, so I don't know. Martian man. How well <laughs> Martian man hunter. <laughs> to do, you Martian know, man like hunter. poker Damn face. It. All right. Fine. No Martian man hunter. It's fine. I guess my question is also a little tease. Maybe you could give us a little tease. Godmother. We heard the name. Who is she? I'll say one thing. She's like a guardian angel to the team. You can take it however you will. That just yeah, shows I how much of a different universe we have that Batman has a godmother. So, yeah, there's that's the thing. There's so many questions I have because. Again, the way you started it, there's so many different aspects, and I want to know everything now. Like The world itself is cool. You could even subtract the mechs, in a sense, and the world itself is cool. But then the mechs, of course, are beautiful. I will text Kenny, like, random questions, and he'd be like, just super small things about, like, how does this operate again? And he'd just go off on a really long, like, breakdown. Fourth of July, I texted you? Yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was, That's like, okay. Page. I was like, how does this work? I remember just texting you, and you just gave me a a good breakdown i'm like okay thank you man but uh, yeah i never know what days what no worries i wasn't doing that much anyway but yeah i think you asked a question that was one short sentence just like how does x y z work and then one dissertation later <laughs> all in text right there while riding in a car <laughs> shot it over to you so no problem yes a lot of it is up here like when i said that i had an eight page document like i'm not kidding it was long and that doesn't even count the like spreadsheets that i made for baldemar to track what the mech influences were what their armaments would be some changes are going to be that are going to come and stuff so yeah there's a lot I don't know how I have all this brain space. I probably f have forgotten my entire childhood at this point. Like, it's just been replaced. Like, fifth grade is gone. Like, it's replaced with DC Mech now. All right. So this is a little less prying than the other two questions. But I kind of felt a mentor role a little bit, whether it was forced or not by Batman, with Wally and Batman. And I kind of was curious of the choice of that and having Barry out of the picture. I'm sure he's going to show up. Just kind of that dynamic. And then if you plan on killing Wally like everyone else. Uh, <laughs> Great question. That was really the submission I submitted was it said DC Mac on the title page and he flipped it and it said kill Wally and big <laughs> left. <laughs> but no, to speak more to that alternate universe, like we mentioned, Superman arrives as an adult. This is a DC universe already on a different path that didn't have Kal-El land as a child. So like Batman is operating globally at this point in order to cover stuff. And the Flash is one of the legacy heroes from the JSA. When we meet Wally, he's piloting the Mark III. So there's already been two other Flash mechs before this one. Barry, we do get into that later. I won't spoil anything right there, but there is a reason. There is a sort of mentorship, partnership sort of thing where they're working together because really they're, they're the two enhanced pilots who are trying to one, prepare for when the invasion comes and two, you know, just handle actual like mechanized crime, which is crazy to say, or like incursions and battles and stuff that happen of trying to tag team it. I think mechanized crime should be in the dictionary. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. All right. If you each had a mech suit, what would it be like? Name, any accessories, abilities, etc. So if I had a mech suit, I think... One, obviously, the ability to go into space, I think, is a big one. Like, launch from the ground, make it up into orbit. I just would love to tool around in space. And then, you know, I'm not a super violent guy. So, like, in real life stuff, I think just having some good manipulator grabber type arms and stuff is good. Maybe having mech. some wings would be fun. A crab mech? Yeah, sure. I'd have a crab, <laughs> space crab. Let's just go with that. I have, like, a space crab with a big bubble top for me to sit in so that people can see me having a good time. 
Yeah, and the legs fold under where the jets are, and it flies up into space where I get into my yeah. crab business. You just fly sideways and stuff. Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah. The jets, they propel, they go whoosh, whoosh. I have to take a lot of Dramamine before I fly it so that I don't get motion sick. <laughs> I would either get, like, a mech designed, like, for speed, just for the need for the speed, <laughs> or just, like, maybe a Green Lantern. I think that's, like, very powerful right there to have a Green Lantern mech. Because, like you said, Kenny... Going to outer space, that'd be really cool just to go to outer space and see things. Are you going to say travel time so that you could just go into orbit and then go right down to where you needed to go instead of fly traditionally? Which would be great, but it'd also be a double-edged sword where your mom's going to be like, can you visit? I'm like, I don't know, mom, you're really far away, but now you can be there in like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so. when your son can go into orbit, there's no excuse not to go home. I know. <laughs> <laughs> But these are small problems. This is how we like to problem. You could say fuel costs. That would be a lot. <laughs> yeah, in Green Lantern, like, all I gotta do is, like, see an oaf, and, like, my body, like, charges up. Yeah, my voice is hoarse today. I can't be spouting no rhymes or anything <laughs> recharging this ring. I like to be very green, and the Green Lantern <laughs> is green, so it's, like... A double whammy right there. So what I'm taking Checked is a, lot of boxes. a mech for hugging, you know, <laughs> yeah. good grass yeah. and space, and then a mech for traveling in thoughts of the environment. But what's yeah. <laughs> I like it. Well, right. I think that cool. brings us to our, our fun time. All right, so we have a game show. This was actually my idea, not Pierre's, but he had a lot of input. So anything strange okay. is probably him. So Pierre, if you're ready. Time for name that Mac. Do, 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 do. Where's the slide? I'm having Damn issues. <laughs> okay, name that Mac. Name that okay. Mac. All right. Now, <laughs> do we name it from the TV show? I'm gonna be honest. I made a few of them up. I think so. Try okay. for the real thing, <laughs> and then get creative. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's the RX-78-2 Gundam. So, yeah, being this is a podcast, generally, if you want to just describe them, but, yeah, Kenny, good job. Got it. He won. Right. I don't mind describing them when I see it. He's samurai-ish in the classic design, white with blue, red, and yellow highlights, which, funny enough, if you guys didn't know this, it was originally supposed to be a dark gray with purple accents, and they told them to make it more toy-like. Yeah, there's a model kit version called the G3, which is in those colors, which are what the Gundam was supposed to look like, and they told them it was too aggressive to get to mono, so they changed the colors to be more friendly, and that's where we got the red, blue, and yellow design. Okay, you don't get extra points for that, but I appreciate it. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, oh, okay. Um, uh, Zoid. Omar, do you know this one? It's Zoid. Zoid. It's Zoid. Yep. That is correct. It's a that's Zoid. Probably not. We're my, looking uh, for very Zoid specific. It was on Cartoon Network, and that's when my parents decided to stop paying for cable. Right when they were about to reveal the name of this machine, <laughs> they cut the cable. So this is a mechanical-looking cat that looks very angry with gold claws and teeth and black accents, and this is the White Liger from Zoids. Final answer? Yes. I don't know. I'm adding suspense. Oh, Liger oh, Zero. I was close. Liger Got Zero. Damn. Zero. So he actually gets attachments in the show. Sorry. I know you didn't see it. But he changes a little bit with, like, different attachments. So I guess when his base model form is happening, he's just a zero. This is good. This is getting challenging. I like this. Uh, no, we got something more for you. This is going to take some creativity from both sides, and you're going to have to make a decision. Versus. Uh, that's right. We have RX-78-2 Gundam versus Liger Zero. Kenny, you're up. Who's winning? Okay. Wow. Okay. So this is how, like, mental math I'm going on this. I'm trying to think of, like, even just the pilots. Okay, I need one stipulation for me to give a real answer because of the writer in me. Would you say this fight is at the beginning of their respective shows, in the middle, or at the end? I'm leaning middle. Middle? Yeah, middle. Middle. I Stab think based on the armaments and everything that Liger Zero would probably, in a fight in the middle of their respective shows have a really good chance of winning just because it's way more combative than the Gundam is. If it were the end, it'd be the Gundam hands down in terms of like the pilot's experience. I don't know that he'd even be able to touch him. Okay. But yeah, middle of it, I might have to give it to Liger Zero. I haven't watched Zoids in a while. Now, listen, the boy is right next to me here and it's hard for me to not. <laughs> I'm holding up my RX-78 2, like one that I custom painted, by the way, uh, oh, put all the decals on and stuff. So it's hard for me to not go with my boy, but an inkling in me says that Liger Zero might win that fight. Okay. If that RX had like 
a shield. Oh, he maybe. is naked. That's a good point. He's got Ready. two swords, but I don't know, man. I need a shield if I'm going to fight like a dog like that. But I have to go <laughs> with Liger Zero only because my boy's got two swords and I feel like he's going to get hurt pretty quick and get bit by an arm or something. Yeah. I mean, Liger Zero's got like guns on him already. Like we could yeah. see guns and stuff. Like the Gundam's got little machine guns on its head and the beam sabers, but I feel like it would take off a couple of limbs and he would have to retreat. Yeah, the right. claws and fangs look pretty aggressive. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I agree with you both. Don't have the knowledge like you, Kenny, especially on all that. But yeah, with that, not sure if you guys remember this one from the original Dragon Ball. I remember it. It has the same shape as Taxi Jin or something. In the first season of Yu Gi Oh, they get like this fusion creature. He kind of looks like Red Ribbon in a way. Just to give you a little bit of an idea, this is early on in Dragon Ball where they form a robot. The top is blue, the middle section is pink, and the arms and the bottom is a hunter green, which is it like some. Bold- color choices so here's the thing i don't know if it has a name does it have a name it has a name you found it yeah emperor one that's probably really wrong but i feel like he would have emperor in the name of it but that might be wrong i didn't know it had a name so kyle if you found a name for this thing i'm very excited to see what it's called i'm not 100 percent sure it's right but it is the peel off peel off machine i was trying to be way too clever i did like your name though emperor one uh, and the red ribbon's yeah. not too far off so that's two good guesses all right kenny this one is specifically for you okay Come on, man. So what we're looking at here is a pirate-themed good robot boy with big old fists and a drill on his head and a katana. This is Frankie from One Piece, who I absolutely love. And I'm, I'm guessing what's coming next. Well, we got a name for you, and it is... I didn't we'll give him his you. full name. We'll uh, give it to you. I still think of him in his Speedo when he's first introduced yeah. <laughs> all the time. His, uh, his Centaur mode is insane. Yeah, that's real crazy. And I've been reading the manga where, like, for the past years or whatever, he's been in that samurai battle where he's a big beetle, which is nuts. So I'm guessing what comes next is oh uh, yeah we got a verse general frankie by a mile frankie all the way yeah yeah that was quick are you sure now i don't know if you remember this the peel off machine does split into three separate machines keep that in mind that's true however they are being operated by peel off my and whatever that fox guy's name is because i could never remember it who's driving when they're combined do they each get limbs because that would just sound like a disaster if like one got the legs one yeah got the legs. it so looks if like I were... they're all holding controls <laughs> yeah i'm gonna agree next one up Ooh. oh okay i know we're really chat. testing some swedish gundam gundam knowledge gundam. Here. the swedish gundam or something is it Poseidon um, gundam? it might be that to cover the base i'm gonna say mermaid gundam because okay, they had so ridiculous got... names we have mermaid gundam and we have poseidon gundam and with the gundam that literally looks like he is in a fish it is Mermaid Gundam. Damn. Mermaid. Okay. I think we're in the we're... same team, right, Kenny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're bringing back some old school Gundam, so we're really testing your knowledge here. If you thought that one was great. Oh, hey. my God. I was hoping you were going to do this one. So what we're looking at now is a giant windmill with the Gundam head, arms, and legs. And this is the Windmill Gundam, or Gundam Holland is the country that it's from. So I'm not going to say you're not right, but there is an alternative name that was used. And, of course, I picked that oh there is because it would be more difficult oh Oh. what was the alternative name it is really the nether gundam the nether gundam yep windmill was in parentheses so i was like i'm gonna go with the more obscure one because he's obviously a windmill (laughs) very obvious you got me on that i did not know windmill was the nickname i thought that was the full name you know i'm sure we could trust my research and then of course you got me there Versus. We have a versus battle, so yeah. who's winning? Mermaid Gundam or Nether um, Gundam? <laughs> I have a canonical reason of who would win. It would be the Mermaid Gundam because the windmill, or the Nether Gundam as it's called, its whole gimmick was just pretending to be a windmill until it could sneak up on somebody. I would say the windmill Gundam because that's how you catch fish. You just pretend like you're not there, like a bear. Mm. You just why okay, that's it? a good point. So I think neither Gundam would do a good job, personally. <laughs> <laughs> the giant mechanical yeah. slap fight. But it's even harder for the windmill one because its windmill is in the way of its arms. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we see these Gundams really anymore. And I don't know if there's been any model kits for them. But... Try looking there were for action them, figures. There were action figures. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, my I'm mom brought me to... home the windmill one. Oh no, that's upsetting, but kind of cool. <laughs> it's like, oh, thanks, mom, you got me the one Gundam that's not as cool as all the others. Next, we have uh, 
So what you're looking at here, That's... watermarked by McDonald's. Wow. Uh, what looks like a Mac. I'll be on. I 100% made this name up. Made the name up? Yeah, I couldn't find a name. So the hint is, what do you think I would just choose as an obvious choice for a mech with chicken nugget containers as shoulder pads. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice that. Is it the the Ronald Mech Nugget? Is it what it's called? <laughs> I was not that creative. That is better, actually. <laughs> Maybe I'll edit the slide real quick. So you found this, obviously, right? Somehow, I did. I think I searched food yeah. mech, which I'm not okay. sure what. You know. <laughs> yeah. I you like called it, like, mech mac. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. I'm just going to ruin it because you guys are just making me feel bad. <laughs> Donald, nice. Yeah. <laughs> It combines with another one to form Big Mac as the name of it. <laughs> Holy shit. What the fuck? All right. So what we have here, you may not be able to tell, but if you look at the right arm, that is a T-Rex, specifically Rex um, from Toy Story. Now, if you keep looking through all the different parts of this mech, you'll notice that they are all iconic Toy Story characters. So I've seen this before. This is a real toy. The it's, name translates very poorly, by the way. It's actually a two-parter toy that you can buy. It's two separate mechs that combine into this. There's a Woody mech, and then there's also a Buzz mech, but both mechs have separate, I guess, pieces to them. Other Toy Story characters. I should know the name of this because I just name saw that mech. somebody <laughs> did a TikTok about these toys that I saw him recently. I don't know the name of it. I'm going to guess if it's like slightly adjacent. Is it Toy Narrative Warrior? Is that what it's called? Close. <laughs> Instead of Toy right. Story. I would call it, I don't know, Ultra Fusion for Andy Toy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's weird that that was actually, it felt closer to what it actually is. Yeah, so again, the real name I took off of a website that was selling it, and it was Google Translate that gave me said name. So, Space Ranger Sheriff Star Combination <laughs> Robo. That is pretty cool, though. I do like that. That name. is a great name. If so, that was a show by itself, I would watch that with that title. <laughs> uh, yeah, come at Disney Plus. Yeah, versus. Okay. So here's the thing. I'm going to guess scale-wise, Space Rangers Sheriff Star Combination Robo is way bigger than the McDonald in size, but it looks like it's very lumbering, and it obviously breaks into a lot of pieces. So I'm going to give it to McDonald with hmm. his swords, being able to chop it into more manageable pieces. And there's probably some McRockets in those McNugget containers on its shoulders. <laughs> yes, looks like it. I will say that you're wrong. I think the mech is actual toy size and just a toy combination. So it's probably going to be like maybe a foot tall. I would imagine so. I but okay. I would also say compared to the, the McNugget shoulder things, and these are actual replica sizes of like a McNugget box, I would feel like it's probably not that big either. Mm. But I would give it to the Space Ranger because if he throws any food projectile, they don't really eat food. So maybe they're not really going to get affected by any junk food itis or diseases that will come along that way. So just like French fries are bouncing off against its chest is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's fair. That's fair. Good answers, both of you. Very good. Don't recall what comes next. Now I do. Oh. Uh, you know what this is, obviously. This is the Batman mech. And, of course, the Superman mech. But the real question is, who would win? You're cold, man. You have That's to pick. Cold. And I know issue one kind of hints towards this fight. Spoiler. But whether that fight goes one way or another, who do you honestly think would win? Not storytelling now. Just pure facts about what you guys have made. So these two versions of the mechs take out the story element of what happens when it lands. Just mech versus mech. Okay. Baltimore, you go first this time. No, man. <laughs> you want me to go? Okay, I'll yeah. go because I have a story reason. So the Batman mech definitely has more gimmicks. The Superman mech is a more powerful, more advanced machine. So if it was in an all-out, like, brawl, not going into spoilers, what happens in the issue. They collide for first time. I'm going to probably have to throw my money on the Superman mech in my book okay. for these versions. I will say if Batman knew ahead of time that he's going to fight Superman mech, Absolutely. I would give it to Batman finding a way. But just, you know, no story aside, I would have to give it to Superman if he just fight i will give it a superman just because he's freaking superman and indestructible 
Okay, I'll take it. So now I'm just thinking to myself, how's the story going to go then? Is that a hint? Oh, there's whatsoever. something you're probably not considering to what's coming up next mm. in terms of what they got to do. And that is not going to be told to me. So next slide. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, this one is this one. That's all I gotta say. Okay, we're looking at two little tiny birds with the Batman and Superman logo on them, appropriately colored gray and black and red and blue, with little yellow and orange beaks. They kind of remind me of, do you guys ever play Portal and Portal 2? They remind yes. me of like the little robots from those a little bit. Do they have names? Do they have like real canonical names? Or are we making them up? I found them. They're not creative on their part for whoever made these things. Okay, so they're birds and they're robots, but they're all also Batman and Superman, so I'm trying to take all three of those into account. Let's see. Mecha Squawk Batman and Metal Feathers Superman. It's not like right. It. But. I like it, but yeah, it's not right. What about you, Baltimore? I'd probably go with, like, Dark Chick for the Batman one and for Superman, those probably, like, Super Roost. Those are good. I would use a different word for Rooster, but I feel like Roost is probably the safest Yes, see where um, you're going with that. <laughs> not as cool as yours. Battle Chicken, Batman, and Superman. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Battle Chicken, Batman, I get, but they just named the other one just Superman? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's Battle Chicken, Chicken, Superman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought it was like Battle Chicken, Batman, and then just Superman. <laughs> yeah, they just got really one. lazy. Yeah. It's Friday, it's 4.55, there's five minutes left. Just make yeah. it on Superman. <laughs> and with the final battle, now that we've introduced you to Battle Chicken, Batman, and Battle Chicken, Superman, who would win? Oh. This is all you. Could they beat these battle chickens? Yeah. They're beating the battle chickens. <laughs> it looks like the battle chickens maybe have one gimmick, which are two guns on each side. No shade on whoever designed the battle chickens, but the battle chickens are getting plucked. They are not going to last very long against our boys. I think it'll be a bloodbath. I will give it to our boys for sure. I think the pilot suits alone would have no issue. Of the, <laughs> the pilot suit versions. Yeah, I think chickens actually are chicken size. So, yes, that was Name oh, That Mac Prize Versus. Well, that was super fun. That was a lot Thanks of fun. For doing that one. I don't think you guys can say that you've ever done that on a podcast. Nope. Never done a game show. <laughs> I had to reteach myself PowerPoint. It was a very long time since I used it. <laughs> All right, so that is the final event of the podcast. The last things we want to ask you is, of course, if you could do a final plug for DC Mech, give us the dates, everything you could possibly give. Awesome, will do. Okay, so DC Mech number one hits comic book stores on 7-27-22. I think you said that this is going to come out on the 25th. So that means that you've got two days. You can hit the store, go and grab your copy. There's awesome variant covers, like we mentioned, from Ricardo Lopez Ortiz. Dan Mora, a Carl Kirsch, and then, you know, just keep a watch out. It's a six issue miniseries. There's going to be one every month, and we're super pumped to share this new universe with you guys. Kenny's got it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to repeat everything he said, real quick? No. All right. Outside of mechs, this is for both of you. Any upcoming projects you want to talk about? Personally, I want to uh, hear about Superboy, but. That's just me. You go first, Baltimore. Yeah, I'll go first. And the thing is, no, because DC Mech is my baby that I'm just in. I'm really jealous of, like, the writer situation of you can do multiple projects at once. It's just super cool, man. But right now, I'm just living, breathing Mech. I will say people should go check out Unearth that you did, because that's great. So thank you. I will plug that for Baltimore. And you'll get to see even more of his awesome drawings when you go pick up issue one. When you pick up 50 copies of issue one a piece on 727, mm -hmm. why not? Get one for everyone you know and their kids. But for me, I am working on, as you mentioned, on Superboy. That was the round robin winner this past year. I'm doing that with Genoa Lindsay. Baltimore was actually the round robin winner the year before. So somehow we worked it out to be the team of round robin winners doing this new series, which we did not plan, which is awesome. But yeah, Superboy's coming along. I'm working on that. That'll be out sometime next year, I think. And then also some creator-owned stuff that hasn't been announced yet. But when I do, I'll make sure to talk to you guys about it. We'll do an episode. I'm really excited to read Superboy. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I've always been a fan of Superboy, and I think this new launch... Oh, Super Boys. I, I voted a lot. Not going to lie. I voted a lot of times. I don't know if I'm allowed Thank to say you, that or not. I appreciate it, it. it happened. Well, but, I appreciate uh, yeah. all the support, man. Especially following it for that many stages and that many rounds of voting. There's a lot of other stuff on the internet you could have been doing. So I appreciate that. Kenny, I don't know how much you can tell us, but I know you're working on something with KLC Press. 
Yep. That was announced a little while ago that Ryan Lee and I are working on a spinoff for them to their Vanish title. That new book that's coming out from Image, we're working on a side story sort of thing that has not all the details have been shared yet, but it's set within that same universe that Vanish is. It's exciting because all of that looks cool too. They're building something pretty good over there. Yeah. Baltimore, I did want to ask, cool. do you do commissions at conventions ever? I do. I have a commission list online that hasn't been open in a minute. Every single time I'm going to open it up, I get thrown into more comic work, more professional work. I remember doing Robins. And I'm like, this is good. I'm just doing like pencils and inks. I'm going to have a little bit more time to work on commissions. And then I get an email. Would you be interested in designing your whole universe called DC Mac? And I'm like, <laughs> holy crap. And yeah, I'm just completely focused on DC Mac at the moment. I will open my commission list later on once I get the hang of drawing this book. But right now it's not open. I do have your email now. So, uh -huh. you know, I'll check in like once a week or something. Nobody yeah, does. check every season. But once we start finishing DC Mac, I'll be opening up my commission list. Sounds good. Are you doing uh, some signings, Kenny? Oh, that is a good point. Yeah, I'm doing Vault of Midnight, which is a group of stores in Grand Rapids, Detroit, and Ann Arbor. I'm doing like a little signing tour with them. So on the 27th, I'll be signing issues of DC Mac number one from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Grand Rapids store. And then on the 30th, I'm going to hit two Vault of Midnights. So I'm going to hit the Detroit one at the same hours on Saturday the 30th. And then the Ann Arbor store from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. that same day. So if anybody wants, if anybody lives in Michigan or is willing to make the crazy trek all the way to Yapier. I want one. I'm just not over there. <laughs> oh, okay. You bring me a copy. I'll sign as many as you get, man, whenever you see me. So I will be at shows like C2E2 and, and Emerald City. I'm not tabling, but if you see me and you have a copy of DC Mech, I will sign it. No problem there. You just hunt me down. Where should everyone follow you guys? Alrighty. So you can follow me at Ken Blake Porter on both Twitter and Instagram. And then you can go to my website too, which is portercomics.com, which has a bunch of stuff. You can go to my website. It's my name, baldemarrebus.com. But I also have an Instagram, which is Mars is an artist. And then my Twitter is baldemar underscore rebus and uh, yeah i'll just post art and i'll post a little uh, sneak peeks of dc mech until release so stay tuned keep your papers on the twitters awesome but yeah i just want to thank you guys again for having us on and i'm really glad you guys love issue one so much we worked super hard on it over the past year the whole thing's already written so baltimore's like tearing through it he's working on issue three right now so like the thing is locked and loaded and ready to launch and i'm glad you guys enjoyed it so much i think it's fantastic it's easily going to be my favorite favorite alternate world from DC for sure. So you guys both, you, thank you, you. Got arc, really great job. Thank you, yeah. man. Kudos to both of you and definitely thank you for coming on. All right. Well, with that, Panelist Podcast. Panelist Podcast. Pieroids. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's still on his eight minute solo intro. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just him singing, nothing else. Yeah. yeah. It changes every time. It's a good song. I mean, you guys should check out the other episodes. You'll love them. The amount of him singing random things is absurd. I think you actually cut it out of almost every episode, though. Other, no, yeah. Like it's, you like put it maybe at the very end. Panloid's podcast. This showed up in the mail today. Well, Figurina oh, Gojo. Nice. Oh, that's Gojo. awesome. Yeah. We went and saw the movie because it was in theaters around here. And like, I was going to go see it by myself. I told my wife, I was like, listen, I'm going to see this movie. It's a prequel to a show in Oak Manga that I read. You don't have to go see it with me. But she wanted to go. She wasn't doing anything. And she absolutely loved it. To the point where she went and saw it again with somebody else. That's awesome. So that's a big shout out for Jujutsu guys. I definitely love that. Yeah, I had it on for two minutes. Just the first episode, the opening where Dojo has him tied up and he's talking to him like how he got here and he's like, where am I? Just those two minutes alone, my girlfriend was like, we have to watch this. I don't know what's happening, but I love it already. <laughs> so That's awesome. Yeah, I don't have that look. My wife goes, oh, why'd you skip the intro? I like the music. Yeah, I'm really bad at showing people things because I'd always be like staring at them to see their reactions. Like, did you like it? She yells at me all the time for that. Panloids Podcast. We are in Jersey, so we only hit New York, Philly, and Baltimore mm -hmm. pretty much. We saw okay. each other in New York, right, Kyle? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. I approached you, I bombarded you, and then I sprinted away. But yes, yeah. we did. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kyle from Panloids Bike.
Yeah, I'm not <laughs> good in person. <laughs> it's like the guy just threw a sticker at my face and just ran away. Yeah, no, that's pretty much what I do. I'm more of a behind the webcam and edit anything I don't like I said kind of person. So, yeah. Yeah, conventions I love a lot, but I am very nervous around a lot of people. No, I hear you. I hear you. It is literally the last thing I want to walk into, but my mm -hmm. favorite thing at the same time. I'm the talker of the group. I like talking and I have no issues with it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talker slash singer. Right, yeah. right. Which brings us to our outro song. No, no, no. No, no. Oh, no, never mind. No, Panelogs Podcast. I'm so nervous right now to do it in front of people. Normally yeah. it's just Dimitri and Jeremiah that I sing a song. No, it's okay, man. All right, here we go. It's a Panelogs Podcast. Yeah, it's us. We're back again. It's Panelogs. Panelogs. I'm going to cut Panelogs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>